The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the July 14th, magnificent Monday edition of the Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everyone is off to a, a great start of their uh, work day. Let's make sure we do everything we can to have a magical, magnificent uh, Monday Welcome to all the new listeners here at uh, TFNN. As we like to say, welcome to the Hotel California. Because once you check in, you will not want to check out. Why? Well, we've got nine hours of live programming each and every day with extraordinary hosts, each providing their own set of tools to help guide you as to what the markets are uh, doing. It's a call-in talk show. That means we'll be happy to uh, speak with you. All you have to do is give us a call at 877-927-6648. We can take a look at the general market, your specific uh, stock, maybe uh, stops, whatever it is, whatever advice we can come up with, we're happy to help you out. Again, our call number 877-927-6648. Again, my name is Steve Rhodes, the morning anchor that kicks things off here at uh, TFN. During the next hour, I will do everything I can to... Uh, well, just simply everything I can to help you master the tools of trading. That includes using different technical tools that I like to use, the A to B equals CD pattern. That's that lightning bolt. I like to take a look at price relative strength divergence out there. Look at the Fibonacci expansions and retracements. Also like to look at Japanese candlesticks. The, the, the signs, the signs that the bulls and the bears make for you and I each and every day. Folks, just give us a call at 877-927-6648. This is Magnificent Monday. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show right now. The Dow is up 125 points. Trade out at 17,069. S&P up at 10. Trade at 1978. The NASDAQ up 25 points. Trade at 4440. Russell 2000 up 7 points at 1167. NDX 100 up 22 points. Uh, New York Stock Exchange up 61. Gold back 30 bucks right now. The uh, descent inside the goal has uh, slowed as we speak. Uh, silver is off uh, 50 cents. It's trading at $20.96. Lights we crude relatively flat off six pennies. It's trading out at uh, 100.77. Natural gas up a penny right now. A quick peek over. Let's go take a look at uh, what's going on across the uh, globe out here. Let's go take a look at the uh, DAX and the FTSE. The DAX is up 97 points. Congratulations to the uh, German football team out there. Let's go see what uh, kind of celebration of what the DAX is actually uh, doing. Let's uh, pull up. I'm just going to need to pull that up on a, a different uh, charting uh, package right here. So give me a moment to find my worldly uh, charts. Should be right at my uh, fingertips here. Where is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, come on. Where is it? A little back a little bit further. That's all. Uh, there we go. World. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the DAX here. So it's trading out at 97.63. Interesting. We take a look at the DAX here. If you take a look at the DAX chart, if you go back to the January seventh, January seventeenth, two thousand fourteen uh, swing point, that's a resistance area. That was uh, ninety seven eighty nine eighty nine. Now you can see when I say it's a res resistance area, why do I say that? We'll take a look at uh, last time. So it gets up there in uh, January seventeenth, makes a retracement, pulls back uh, towards a uh, swing point. Does that on uh, February the fourth? Our market's made a low February fifth. Goes ahead, retraces back up to its highs. Doesn't get up to that trading session from January seventeenth. Makes a little bit lower low. Makes an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside. That A to B equals CD pattern looks like this inside of the uh, DAX. Looks like maybe a little bit more than a one-to-one. -one. Just a little bit more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD the downside. We can see here it was really consolidating. So the DAX here, if we take a look at that consolidation range, this is what it would look like inside of the uh, DAX right here. Now I'm going to pull it back to about right there. All right, because there's your consolidation. That's the highlighted area. It's yellow on my uh, screen. Might be a little bit off of that. Now, when you take out a consolidation area, what you like to see is some conviction behind the move. Not a tiny, eeny, beady candle out there, but uh, something with wide price spread. And, of course, you'd like to see some accelerated volume. Well, that's what the DAX did on the trading session of May 27. It gapped up. That's wide price spread out there. When you break a consolidation, 
What you really like to see, obviously, if you're long, you really love to see a break of the consolidation. But what you really want to see when you're a bull is you want to see price come back and test that area. Because when you test it and reject it, it tells you that it wants higher price. Well, the DAX here moved higher up into the trading session of June 10th and then pulls back and it tests that area on June 26th out there. It tested and held it, went ahead and moved higher. But what the DAX has now done, it's come back into that area and it's now back inside the consolidation. That means I should just kind of expand this out or try to, there we go, expand this. Now, at this stage of the game, what the DAX has actually done is failed. It's failed to hold that consolidation. All that it's doing here this morning, even though there's a little party going on in Germany, it's failed to even break back out of the consolidation. It will need to close, in my opinion. It'll need to close above 9807.25. That's the July 10th uh, high out here in order for the DAX to resume its consolidation. Now, the consolidation uh, price projection, you'd probably use about... Uh, Let's say it opened at 89.39. Uh, we'll just call it 9,000 just to make it easy for my math out here. 9,000 to the high of 97. So about a 800-point uh, move. 800-point move above. And that's if it can get back out of the consolidation. That's what the DAX will be signaling. But thus far, it looks as if it is a false break topside. That's what's going on inside of the uh, DAX in Germany. Let's look at the FTSE out here. The FTSE has failed to break its consolidation pattern. So if the uh, U.S. markets and the European markets are going to move hand-in-hand, in hand, what the FTSE needs to do, the FTSE is going to need to clear the uh, July 3rd high, 68.66, and do it by more than just a few points out there. Uh, in fact, what it really needs to do, it needs to clear the key reversal session from may 15th out there that high 6894.88 that's what the uh, that's what the, the FTSE needs to do so it's just still continuing to travel with inside its consolidation pattern as long as we're over here in the world markets let's go look at the nikkei interestingly enough boy this looks like a morning of consolidations to discuss about Nika here has been in a, a little sideways consolidation as well ever since that downdraft, the trading session of uh, January 24th out there. That's the area that it can't break above for some reason. So I'm assuming I don't have volume out here, but we do have wide price spread. Uh, we do see the consolidation pattern. That's a colored in this section out here. In order for the uh, Nikkei to really bust out of this consolidation, it needs to close above 15485. I would really have to say close above the low of January 24th to be convincing. And that would be 15288.32. So another consolidation pattern going on inside of the uh, marketplace out here. Again, our call number is 877 Six six four eight. Let's go take a look at the uh, ETF structures. Let's go see what we have going on inside of uh, those. We'll start off by taking a look at the uh, Qs. Up fifty cents this morning, trading out at ninety five seventy six. The Qs here. Let's pull this back just a, a tad. We'll widen it up for you. Looks like the uh, swing point that it's dealing with. July third's high was ninety five seventy. 95.71 on July 7th, so we'll use 95.71. 23 million shares out there. You're priced at 95.76. It would be uh, bullish for the accused to, uh, one, close above 95.39. That's his unfair high. That's its resistance area. But, look, the reality is needs to close above a trading session here from July 7th to break out. 90. 571 do it with more than 23 million shares that would be bullish uh, what we saw here on friday was uh, dismal uh, even though it was a no shortened trading session even though it was a uh, weekend uh, friday in the uh, summertime only 19 million shares as it was taking on 23 million shares and both those both those volumes there they are inside the queues they uh, light volume days are more a signature of a market top short term market top but they are more a signature of a market top than a not. And today being a Monday volume here, nothing great. Four million shares, not too shabby. But we'll see how uh, volume uh, continues throughout the uh, day. But the numbers to be watching most certainly is a uh, move above uh, 9571 in the queues with more than 23 million shares. That would be bullish out there. 
Let's take a look at the last hour. We really took a look at the NQ in detail, so I won't do that. But the uh, parameters are are out there inside the NQ. You can uh, you can re rack the first hour and uh, listen to that show. That's on Channel Nine on Tiger TV. Let's look at the IWM Russell Two Thousand. The struggling of the uh, four indices out here and the uh, IWM right now uh, struggling to uh, get back inside its market profile range. That happens to be one sixteen. 54, I believe, is the uh, number 116.54, uh, or right, right, just that's eh, just a little bit above that. Right around, uh, well, we'll call it. See, today's high is uh, 116.46. Yeah, 116.54 is going to be the number that we'll we'll use. I think that's where it's trading at. But you can, if you're watching us on Tiger TV. Let's do this here. Let's take a look at its retracement just to kind of put things in perspective out here. Let me uh, delete this. Let's take a look at the retracement off of the highs. That's really what we want to take a look at here. And the highs that I'm referring to are the trading session from uh, July 1st. So from the July 1st high down to the low that was put in here on the uh, trading session of, what, uh, July 10th. We'll also see that 116.64 happens to be the 0.382 retracement. So inside the small caps, Russell 2000 would be sending a message to us today as well. If it glows inside its market profile uh, uh, low out there, its old support line, which right now is still acting as a, a resistance point. Let's go take a look at the, that's what's going on on the weekly basis. I'm sorry, the daily basis. Let's take a look at the uh, SPIs. Let's go see what the SPY is doing. Uh, she's trading out at 197.65. That's trading into the uh, swing point here from the trading session of uh, July the 3rd. That's got 52 million shares up there. So far this morning, you're up with 13 million shares. The SPYs need to close above with volume. Need to close above 198.29 and uh, in order to... Uh, in order to really have a, a bullish uh, breakout here inside of the uh, market, let's take a look at the uh, diamonds. Dow Diamonds up a buck twenty-two, leading the charge on the way up, up seven tenths of a uh, percent out there. Kind of interesting. The uh, diamonds out here are taking on a, a swing point from the trading session of July 3rd. That only had volume of 2 million shares. Shoot, no problem. It's already got a million shares. So it is the, uh, it is the uh, Dow here that is uh, beginning to uh, beat its chest and roar its roar. If it can close above that high from July the 3rd, that's 170.47. That would be uh, bullish inside of the uh, Dow. Where would that uh, take us to? Well, the uh, Dow has a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD that's unfinished. So it has one unfinished business up at the level of about 172.82. It's trading right now at 170.40. And closing above the July 3rd high would be sending the message that it wants to go ahead and make that move to the upside. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, gold. Let's go update uh, gold. Let's look at the market profiles inside of uh, gold. Right now, gold is trading back about uh, 30 bucks. Let me get you the exact number here. $29 to be exact. It's trade out at 1308 the market profiles will be back just a, a little bit here because of a slight delay in order to stitch together all of the contracts. This shows 1307. So when we get back, what we'll do is we'll go take a look at Goldilocks. Very, very interesting, as Colonel Clink used to say, and one of my favorite uh, shows out there, Hogan's Heroes, 1299.20, would be very, very interesting inside of the gold complex. 877-927. Six six four eight. I'll explain. We can. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 124 right now. S&P is up uh, 10. And we did have that uh, super full moon come in on uh, over the weekend, uh, Saturday evening, uh, Sunday morning out there. Hope you had a, a chance to take a look at it. What does that mean? It means the uh, we had both perigee and the uh, full moon come in within a 24-hour period of each other. Perigee is the lunar phase when the moon is closest to Earth during this cycle out there, and that uh, made the moon look a little bit uh, larger out there, but it still was the uh, same moon. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, I've got uh, my lunar, one of my lunar uh, charts out here. This one just showing the uh, full moons and the uh, new moons as they occur out here. Now, the thing is, with a uh, full moon coming in on a, a weekend, you never know was the uh, low the prior day. In this case, here would actually have to have been on uh, Thursday out there on July the uh, 10th, because the actual full moon came in on July the uh, 12th. So we, we can give it a, a day. The question is, is it the low of July 10th, or could it be the high of today's session, July the 12th? And we really won't know that. What are the opposing things in the sky that are going on out here? Well, you do have a uh, you do have a uh, turn date, a Bradley turn date out here. That is uh, coming into play uh, pretty much just as we speak right now within a day or so. If we take a look at the blue line, this happens to be the Dow chart that we're looking at um, that we are looking at on my screen out here. The uh, blue line is the uh, is the Bradley model. Nothing changed. It's uh, it's exactly the way that it is. Nothing's inverted uh, out here. 
Uh, I don't like to invert uh, patterns uh, just simply because it doesn't have as much meaning to me out here. But if we take a look at the uh, Bradley model, if you take a look at the uh, last real low, major low that came in out here, uh, where it did seem to turn on a dime, on a Bradley dime, that is. If you look at the uh, April 11th area, the April 15th area, that's when the market made its last significant low. The uh, Bradley model down here where my cursor's at, I'll just go ahead and highlight that area for you. That little area there is where it also showed a, a little turn. Uh, the uh, next level here where it was uh, forming a little bit of a bottom, uh, that also seemed to have uh, worked as uh, well. So we'll circle that area, then I'll circle it on the uh, chart. I'll actually blow it up. Oops, I can't blow it up like that. Uh, I'll just do this by, by leaving the uh, chart the way that it was. It didn't uh, connect. But, but right in here, uh, this formed a little bit of a uh, low out there inside of the uh, market out here. So there's a low. So the question's going to be, is this going to mark a... Uh, now, you're going to see a huge uh, decline here in the Bradley model from the July 14th, 15th area all the way down to this uh, low down here in about the uh, early January uh, time frame out here. Uh, the Bradley model just simply made up of a number of planets, their alignments, and uh, taking a look at conjunctions and giving them positive or negative uh, valencies out there. You can find Donald Bradley's book on the uh, Internet uh, if you'd like to learn more about it. Uh, but just because it has this significant decline, it's more of a directional indicator versus a uh, tick or anything like that if, in fact, it does work. So if there's anything in a you – can, you can see the market moving up into the full moon, so to speak, as well as the Bradley model out here. So we want to really pay attention to other patterns inside the marketplace. But it is at least worth knowing uh, as far as what is going on up in the uh, skies overhead. If we take a look at – before we went to that last break, we were looking at uh, gold. I mentioned the uh, market profile on gold, so let's go back and take a look at that. I had mentioned the nine. Uh, I'm sorry, the 1919, the 13. This is a 120 minute chart. Let me get the daily chart back up on the uh, screen for us. I mentioned the uh, 1299 level out here. So far, the interest session low has been uh, 12. 1302.20, 1302.20, and you're trading right now around the 1308 level. If in fact, gold goes ahead and breaks the 1299.20. And I am of the opinion that that's what gold is going to do. I'm of that opinion, number one, because, uh, uh, because uh, the uh, large commercial traders have been ramping up their net short positions as a percentage of open interest. And not at a small pace at a very large pace out there. So large money is betting on a move lower. We also have a 13-and-a-half-month cycle. It happens to be this week of all, of all times when it would actually hit. Uh, that, uh, and that's, 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 that's not, that does not necessarily have to hit to the week, but it is interesting to have seen the uh, gold sell off thus far today. So the key here is what, it doesn't really matter what I think. Only, a, only to me, really. The real proof of the pudding will be first to close below 1299.20. Then we start taking a look at retracement areas and breakout areas. In the case of uh, gold, the real breakout level was back here in this little doji candle on uh, June 17th out there. And that price point is at uh, 12.58. Now, if we take a look at retracement levels, and we go from the retracement low that's back here on uh, June 3rd up to the high that was put in here a couple of trading sessions ago, we get back, we'll go take a look at that. The next level of support would be 12.80.90. Hey, nothing wrong with something pulling back to the retracement level. Of course, the .786 is around 12.63. We'll have a pretty good idea when we take a look at volume. That's on hold, trading out at about 13.080 under major pressure out here. Steve Rhodes, TFNN. Be right back. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow leading the charge on the way up, up uh, about eight tenths of a percent, up 133 points. The S and P up a half a percent, up by uh, 10 points. Let's go check in on what's going on inside uh, some of the uh, sectors inside the uh, market. I've got the uh, top 10 holdings with inside uh, each of the uh, sectors inside the S&P 500. Uh, let's start off. Let's take a look at what's going on inside of the, uh, let's start off with the number one sector. So Apple, of course, number one weighting structure inside of the XLK. You got Apple, Microsoft, Verizon, AT&T, IBM, uh, Google, uh, Oracle, Qualcomm, Intel, and Cisco. So let's see, what do we have percentage-wise that's the big mover? So you've got Apple's up a little over 1%, IBM up 1% uh, as well. Let's go take a look at both of them. Let's go look at IBM first. And it's trading out at 189.92. Uh, it is taking out a, a previous uh, swing point here. That had uh, volume on the trading session of uh, July 2nd. That's when it met a high of 188.99. Uh, that had volume of 5 million shares. Uh, so far today, it's traded with 1.2 million shares. So it's got pretty decent volume here today. Let's see, where is IBM going to uh, struggle? Let's see. Where is IBM, is IBM going to struggle? Let's put this on a, a weekly time frame here. Let's try to get a better view of what IBM is doing on a, a weekly time frame. And let's do this. Let's draw a little trend line here. Let me get rid of some of the uh, markers on here. We can always add these things back in. But let's just clean off the uh, chart. Just a uh, tad inside of IBM. Let's get rid of that, that, 
Let's get rid of that for sure. Okay, so now we're now we're pretty good. Now I'm going to take a, a trend uh, tool. We're going to come from uh, the trading session. Looks like the high back here on uh, eight, March 18th, 2013. I'm going to use that as the uh, trend line, and uh, yeah, I'd say I'd, I would use it just like just like this here. That looks like a pretty decent trend line. The reason I say I'm using it as the uh, next touch point, folks, the uh, trading session for May 27th. Now, I did move it up into the actual emotional high of the trading session here of uh, April 7th, uh, as well as I did move it up to the high here on the uh, trading session of April 14th. Those areas acted as resistance here. You can see you had price punch up into that level, and it failed. Same thing on the trading session of April 14th. And you can see right now, IBM is moving right up into that uh, trend. So I would say if IBM can it close, can, can it close? How about that? If IBM can close above this uh, little trend line out there, that would be uh, that would at least be short term bullish. The uh, swing point that it's trading into from a weekly standpoint has got 30 million shares out. Well, I take that back. The swing point has... Uh, yeah, 30 million shares. That's April the 7th. And uh, what it would need to do is uh, get inside 191.57, a couple bucks above where it is right now. It's trading out at 189.97 in order to suggest that it wants to at least go back in the tag and test that uh, swing point high out there. Um, IBM is also trading into just a little bit of a uh, supply line from the week of April 15, 2013. So right now, IBM is moving right into a little bit of a resistance area, and that's the uh, leader inside the technology sector, one of the leaders. Another leader is Apple. Let's go see what Apple is uh, doing, AAPL, AAPL is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's look at, uh, here's the weekly chart. Now, uh, Apple almost back to its all-time highs out here. If you put it in perspective, uh, you've got to do the seven for one split out here. So Apple made its high back on the trading session of September the 17th. The low out there was 99.09. The high was 100.72 multiplied times 70. You got $700 plus, right? So that is uh, that's what Apple is doing. It's trying to get back up into that uh, swing point. This is a weekly chart. Let's go see what the daily chart holds for us inside Apple. Let's see what kind of volume we have inside it so far this morning. 14 million shares. Last time it was up here, it had 65 million shares. So an hour's worth of trading. Not too bad uh, there. Uh, a large, potential large A to B equals CD. That's the uh, swing point high from uh, June 10th. Only had 62 million shares. And price got above that with, well, 56. It has not been above that level. Is that right? Is that is that right? Uh, yeah, it's not been above the uh, swing point with volume just yet. Sixty-two million, and it had uh, fifty-six. And see, I take that back. Sixty-five million, and yeah, that qualifies as a uh, breakout. It actually says that IBM. This actually says that Apple. I mean, even the most conservative A to B equals C D pattern on this. Let's go with the most conservative. You would come off of the. Uh, trading session from uh, from May 9th, and I'm being very conservative here. The B point being uh, June 10th, the C point being uh, down here on June 26th. It would say that uh, Apple wants to run to 101.80 and actually take out its highs out there, its all-time highs uh, that we were taking a look at on the uh, weekly chart. So uh, it doesn't look too shabby for Apple. It is making higher highs. It is doing it on less relative strength, but until you see any kind of bearish reversal signal, that's just a, a warning that's signal out here. So uh, that's on Apple. Let's take a look inside the uh, financial sector, the top 10 holdings inside here. You got Wells Fargo. Uh, that's the uh, number one holding. That is trading down a half a percent off 29 cents. Let's go see what Wells Fargo is doing on out here. That's a, a daily chart that we're looking at inside Wells Fargo. It completed a one-to-one. -one. A to B equals C to the upside. Once you do that, you typically do something uh, different. It's also made it with a, uh, made a higher high on less relative strength. I uh, gave you a little reversal signal. The trading session of uh, June 24th out there, all it did was get back up to the uh, resistance area, and it's moved lower. Now, it looks to be just consolidating. It's a daily chart right now. The low here, the consolidated swing point that is dealing with 16 million shares on June the 16th, came back here on Friday with 29. Ooh. Not good. 29 million shares. So actually, you got Wells Fargo was pushing lower with volume out here. Okay, so now let's go try to figure out where this is headed to. It sticks out for me like a sore thumb. If we see Wells Fargo 
close below a swing point, swing point to the downside. And the uh, swing point I'm looking at is June 16th. Do it with more than 16 million shares. Wells Fargo is likely going to go run down to the uh, level of April 11th out here. That's a high, little high volume low sticking out. Anywhere between 46.72. And 4887 out there. Let's take a look at its uh, market profile. So right now, it is trying to hold its market profile low at 5136 out here. Um, so Wells Fargo is struggling just a uh, tad. Let's see what else we have inside the financial sector. You got uh, Berkshire Hathaway. That's trading up uh, three tenths percent. Let's look at J.P. Morgan. That's up a little over one percent this morning. Let's go see what that is doing. Up seventy six cents. Let's take a look at its daily chart. Now, J.P. Morgan had completed an A to B equals C to the upside. Uh, that was uh, off the trading session from May sixteenth. That was your A point. Your B point was uh, May twenty ninth. Your C point was down here on June second. Your one to one price projection was fifty seven ninety seven. It uh, missed it because it got up to fifty seven ninety four. That was on the trading session of uh, June. Is that June? Yeah, June 10th out there. Now we we'll take a look at uh, what it is doing. Let's get rid of the A to B equals C D out here. Let's delete that. Okay. Now in J.P. Morgan's case, let's go see where we've got some volume on this little puppy. Let's put it on a weekly chart first. Let me put J.P. Morgan on a, a weekly chart, see what sticks out at us. What sticks out at me, what sticks out at us. J.P. Morgan, boy, I don't see any big volume to the downside out here right now that it's dealing with. Okay, so let's take us back to the uh, daily chart out here. I don't see any kind of three drive to a top pattern or anything along those lines. Let's go back and take a look at a daily chart. Let's take a look at the uh, market profiles out here. So right now it is uh, busted below as it's come off its most recent high back on June 23rd out here. Volume on the pullback, uh, nothing too shabby. What it has done, it's broken its market profile low. Levels that off of the lows out here back in uh, May 19th, uh, price areas that it held. And it broke through that. Really with a little bit of conviction, both the July 7th and July 8th out here. Volume on those moves to the downside were about uh, 18 million shares this morning here up with, hey, not bad, up with 4 million shares in uh, J.P. Morgan. It has provided, it has uh, created, it has formed a new market profile, but that's just today. I'm going to use uh, what, what J.P. Morgan needs to do to get back into its bullish Potential bullish stance out here. No A to B. No Gart looks. No no Gartley buy pattern or anything that really it has formed. Well, you probably make a. Let me do this here. We'll put uh, J P Morgan. Let's do this on my other uh, chart. I'll go ahead and pull it off here and see if we can. Uh, give me a moment here. Show you the potential of a of a little Gartley pattern because because of this move down from June 23rd to the low here on June 26th and then a little bit of a retracement up that actually is enough to form a, a little Gartley pattern there an A to B equals C D you can see how that formed here point six one eight how about that so you have J P Morgan actually when it moved down here on the trading session of uh, July 10th. That was on uh, Thursday. It actually had formed a little point six one eight Gartley buy pattern out here. And the gap up uh, this morning is uh, pretty nice. Now, Gartley buy pattern has uh, five different potential outcomes. Outcome number one is the dead cat bounce, the point three eight two retracement. Well, it uh, gapped above that this morning. Uh, that means it's a wide-ranging bar. If we take a look at it, if you color in the uh, dots out here, I'll show you what that looks like. We'll go from where it opened this morning to the close on uh, Friday. That's this. And uh, now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and we'll color that in. We'll give it a nice little lime green color out here. And, uh, of course, that looks like that wasn't as limey green. There we go. Let's take a look at that. This is what this morning's bar really looks like. Because if I take a look at where the uh, close was on uh, Friday versus where we're at today, so you can see you've got a nice little wide-ranging bar to the upside here this morning, getting above the .382. It says J.P. Morgan should at a minimum go to 5701. Uh, based on the uh, current action. If you get above that, the third outcome comes into play. That's 57.54. Fourth outcome happens to be a 100% move of a move. That would be getting back to the June 23rd swing point. You'd want to be watching volume up there. If it can get more than 16 million shares, that would be uh, bullish, at least short-term bullish. So that's what's going on inside of uh, J.P. Morgan. We took a look at J.P. Morgan. We took a look at Wells Fargo. Let's see another sector out here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go take a look at a, another sector inside the S&P 500 to get a feel for what's going on. Let's look at the energy sector, the XLE. That's one that uh, folks love to uh, play out there, either with the uh, DUG or the DIG or the uh, ERY or the 
whatever else it might be. Whoops, I didn't necessarily mean to do that. If we take a look at the uh, at the energy sector. You got uh, Exxon Mobil leading the charge to the uh, upside. Uh, that's the number one weight in, in the uh, inside the uh, energy sector. Actually, percentage wise, I take that back. We've got Halliburton. Halliburton's up one uh, percent, up seventy seven cents, and you've got EOG Resource. Let's take a look at Halliburton. Can't recall the last time I looked at Halliburton. Trading out at sixty nine seventy five, uh, trying to take out a uh, market profile resistance zone, which is at sixty nine thirty seven. It's trading at sixty nine seventy seven. Nice bullish looking uh, stair stepping uh, stock chart out here. Its swing point high from the trading session of July first has got five point five million shares. I haven't seen any kind of volume off the highs or anything. Uh, we did see it make a higher high on less relative strength. Uh, and you saw a little bit of a reversal signal back in here on July the uh, 7th. But so far, the uh, pullback just coming back into a, a support area. So the stock chart itself does not look too bad. Let me put this on a, a weekly time frame for us and take a look at Halliburton, ticker symbol H-A-L. And let's take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. To take out the B point, let me uh, go ahead and get rid of that. The B point on here is a trading session from November 11, 38 million shares as price got over that. Did it with 43 million shares. So there's a, a large A to B equals CD to the upside in place for Halliburton. It would look like uh, this. I'd, I'd come down here to this little doji back in November of 2000. And, uh, well, I tell you what, let's, let's do this. Let's take the, uh, I probably have to finish it. Here's a large here's a large A to B equal C D to the upside. Says uh seventy four twenty nine out there. Let's look at the oh, we'll leave that one in place. Let's look at the smaller A to B equal C D to the upside, see if we've come up with uh, two patterns that kind of uh, agree with each other price wise out here. Um, no. Yeah, you do. You got a one to one point six one eight on the small one and a larger one. They're both taking you to about the seventy four dollar level out there. So it does look like caliber not its way to about seventy four bucks right now, trading out at sixty nine eighty one. That was a longer term look at Halliburton as we took a look at the uh, weekly chart for it. Uh nothing uh, we ought to take a look at ExxonMobil. Uh, because of its weighting structure inside of the energy sector, inside of the XLE. Just a uh, move sideways today. No great shakes here inside of ExxonMobil. Uh, it had a little downdraft, some volume off of the high. No, it, it really didn't have any volume off of the highs. Uh, so uh, ExxonMobil moving up today with uh, 1.4 million shares. Last uh, last high inside of Exxon was on July 9, 7.6 million shares out there. So volume not too shabby, but I expect it will fall off, uh, dissipate today with it being a, a Monday in the uh, middle of uh, July and almost truly the middle of uh, July out here. Let's take a look at uh, one other sector. Let's go look at the uh, XLV. Let's look at the health sector. Let's look at uh, Celgene. To the downside, off a half a percent this morning, down uh, 46 cents out here. Doesn't look like much of a, a big deal inside of uh, Celgene. Uh, Celgene had uh, last run up into its swing point high. It had 4.3 million shares from July 3rd. It did that on Friday with 3.7 million shares, so light volume on the way up. Celgene right now just simply consolidating sideways. We take a look at its uh, levels here, its uh, market profile, still in bullish mode, been in very bullish mode after coming off of the bottom back here in April, April 16th to be exact. So still a nice, strong-looking move inside of Celgene, C-E-L-G. Right now inside the markets, we've got the uh, Dow up 131, S&P's up 11. Steve Rhodes, TFNN, we'll be right back. Thanks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades 
open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. We've got the uh, Dow is up 134, S&P is up 11, NASDAQ composite up uh, 22 points out there. Uh, let's kind of take a uh, look here at the uh, markets, give you some uh, give you some levels, some benchmarks to uh, take a look at out here as far as the market to breaking out topside. So we'll look at the uh, four uh, futures contracts. We'll look at them on the uh, daily basis. Let's start with the S&P futures right now. S&P futures, in order for them to uh, really suggest that it is breaking out to the upside, you'd want to see it close above 1974. I would say I would adjust that to the uh, swing point from July 3rd. That high was 1978.25. Uh, not being able to break that, it's more bullish to neutral, not bearish, but it needs to break above 1974. That's your benchmark there. If we take a look at the NQ on a uh, daily basis out here, uh, its magic number that it wanted to or needs to close above here today is 3918, I believe, is the uh, number. 3918 right now, it's trading out at 3925, and uh, that is also a break above the high from July 7th. Uh, 
That's what the NQ needs to do. The Dow has really, in essence, already broken above its level. It did that, I think, on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. No, it did it today. It was this morning here inside the Dow Futures. The number it needs to stay above is 16889 It is also much more bullish to take out the swing point from July 3rd. That was up at the level of 16,994. So the Dow in a, a nice little bullish move out here. So you get the Dow and the NQ up above their levels. So the uh, S&P and the Russell 2000 have not. What the Russell 2000 would need to do today in order to join Spanky and their gang, it needs to get above 1175 out there. So that's what's going on. That happens to be its market profile low. Uh, that's what would uh, get some synergy in the markets with them wanting to move higher. Obviously, we pointed out uh, earlier we have a, a full moon that came in. Over the weekend, you're never sure when something comes in over the weekend, whether it marks a swing point low. In this case here, the low was not on Friday. It would have been on Thursday. Or is it marking a swing point high? You've got a Bradley turn date that is taking place this week as well. So when markets move up into those types of things, they become triggers. Not necessarily where you go ahead and place a trade. You want to wait and get some type of reversal signal out there before that takes place. To the bullish side out here, uh, if we take a look at uh, your friend and mine, that's the Euro Japanese Yen. We'll go ahead and put the uh, daily chart up on my screen in just a moment as soon as I can click over to it. I'm doing it as fast as I can. So we'll put that currency pair out here. That would show us... Uh, it didn't get all the way back there. How to do that? Thought I had it. Uh, but that's going to show... What that's going to show us right now, I can tell you, is that the lows have held. Very important lows for that uh, currency pair. Why that currency pair? Because it tracks our market so well. Better than any other currency pair. And this has got to be a nice, wide-ranging bar here this morning. And that says, uh, that says that it may want higher price as well. And to the extent that it does want higher price, let me go over to an uh, intraday chart. Let me look at this currency pair. Here's the 30-minute chart. 30-minute chart was forming this 0.618 Gartley sell pattern. Wide-ranging bar that said, nah, it was going to go ahead and move to higher price, and that's what, it do that's what it's doing. So we'll see what happens with this currency pair as it gets to 138.48 out there. And if that turns into be a 0.786 Gartley sell and you start to see this moving south that's going to make me say, hmm, something to think about. Lastly, though, from the bullish side, it's the VIX index, and she has cleared the 50-day exponential moving average. That is a move below 1204. It's trading at 1148 out there. That says right now, as we take a look at the markets, all things point to uh, bullish and to moves upside. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me here at TFNN. Our man Basil Chapman is up next. It is marvelous Monday. That means we got Basil Chapman. we got Daryl White. David, I'm sorry, Daryl Martin, David White, and the uh, Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. Have a uh, marvelous Monday, folks. Look forward to seeing you. Please take care now. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.